Okay, thank you, Carly. Uh, yeah, my topic is the fine-tuned universe. And as you can see by my email address, I'm a uh, Star Trek fan. Cubecontinuum.org is a reference to, uh, to Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, you can see here, uh, there's a, this is a, a clip, I'm going to show a short clip here from a uh, 1990 program. Uh, Q is a re reoccurring character. He comes from the Q Continuum. He's a, an omnipotent being. And in this particular episode, he actually has lost his, he's been kicked out of the Q Continuum, lost his, his omnipotent powers, and he has, is having to deal with being a mortal human. So let me just show that clip. The moon will hit its perigee in 10 hours. Now, we match its trajectory, increase emitter coolant rate so that we can apply continuous warp equivalent power nine to the tractor beam. We can push it for nearly seven hours, and I think that just might do it, but there's a problem. The Enterprise will be dangerously close to the atmosphere. That's the problem. This is incredible. You see something here, Q? I think I just hurt my back. I'm feeling pain. I don't like it. Uh, what's the right thing to say? Ow? Ow. Ow! I can't straighten up! Medical assistance to engineering. Q, I've got a few people down on Braille 4 who are gonna be hurt. Yes, 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 your marvelous plan will not only tear the moon to pieces, but your precious ship as well. You got a better idea? Well, I would certainly begin by examining the cause and not the symptom. We've already done that, Q, and there's no way to... This is obviously the result of a large celestial object passing through at near right angles to the plane of the star system. Probably a black hole. Can you recommend a way to counter the effect? Simple. Change the gravitational constant of the universe. What? Change the gravitational constant of the universe, thereby altering the mass of the asteroid. Redefine gravity. And how am I supposed to do that? You just do it! Oh! Where's that doctor, anyway? Jordy is trying to say that changing the gravitational constant of the universe is beyond our capabilities. Oh. Well, in that case, never mind. <laughs> okay, so Q make, brings up an interesting concept of, of changing uh, grav the gravitational constant of the universe. Um, so what would happen if we did that? Well, before we get into that, let's just do a really quick review of how physics and life relate to one another. You know, 14 billion years ago, the Big Bang produced a universe that was mostly filled with hydrogen. And over the course of about 400 million years, that hydrogen coalesced into stars. And at some point, a nuclear fusion reaction occurred. And it forged all of the heavier elements that we have on the periodic table. Actually, all the elements all the way up to iron. As it turns out, um, anything heavier than iron can't be forged in, the, in a uh, nuclear fusion reaction. Instead, what happens is when that star reaches the end of its life, um, it, it explodes in a supernova explosion. And that supernova explosion, not only does it distribute all that matter, it also pr produces all the other elements in the periodic table heavier than iron. Uh, and of course, the fact now it's released from the uh, star and it's available to form future stars and planets. And some of those planets, of course, go on to f produce life. And that life is enabled by the complex chemistry that's possible when we have this um, this uh, large uh, number of, um, of elements in the uh, periodic table. So what if we had some way of changing things? Say we had this omnipotent bias. <laughs> as, a, as you can see, we have various options. Um, now, I'm not going to touch any of the space-time dimensions or laws of physics. I'm just going to take a look at the physical constants. And uh, let's just take a look here. Actually, there's, there's about 20, depending on how you count them, there's about 20 physical constants of nature. Now, these aren't numbers we calculate from theory. These are numbers we can measure. But we have no theory that predicts what these numbers should be. There are things like uh, the, the weights of different fundamental particles, um, the strengths of different uh, forces. So let's say, we, let's go down here and let's, this is the force of uh, electromagnetism. Let's maybe, let's increase this a little bit. And well, let's go back here and change. Let's save that change. Uh, <laughs> is, you know, are you ready? <laughs> okay, here goes. You know, what happens? What would happen if we did that? Well, unfortunately, nothing good would happen <laughs> because that s small little change would actually end up stopping the nuclear reaction within stars. So we'd get these cold balls of hydrogen and none of those nice heavy elements would exist and of course therefore no life would exist either. 
So we, we left with a universe that was devoid of life from just tweaking one little uh, physical parameter. And it's, as it turns out, a lot of those parameters are the same. If we were to tweak any number of them, we would end up most of the time with a universe that's devoid of life. It wouldn't have a necessary complexity because we would, we've stopped some important physical process from occurring. So what do we make of this? This, this seems quite surprising because it seems like we live in a universe that's finely tuned for us to exist. We could, there's various things we could, very, various hypotheses we could draw from this. One is, well, could be, maybe we're just lucky, right? The universe is this way and we're, we're here as a result and we're lucky. Well, that could be, but the problem is that, you know, if we calculate, it seems like it's unlikely given the fact that uh, everything seems to be very sensitively ba um, sensitive on these different uh, physical parameters. You could conclude, well, maybe, maybe there's a supreme being that has fixed these uh, constants to be uh, the way they are, you know, so that we can exist. This is a form of the um, intelligent design hypothesis. Now, it could be, but of course we should be suspicious of this because this sort of hypothesis has been proven to be incorrect, or at least uh, in, in the past. So it's been hypothesized many times, and it's always been that a natural explanation has been preferable to uh, hypothesizing a god. So what about a natural explanation? How could this come about naturally? Well, there could one possibility is that we could live in a multiverse. And, well, before I get into a, what a multiverse is, let me just use an analogy here. Supposing after Skeptic Camp, we go, to we go out and we play um, um, poker. And on the very first game of poker, I lay down my cards and I reveal I've got this high-ranking straight flush. You might be kind of suspicious <laughs> that I got this hand on my very first game, you know, given that it's so unlikely. It could happen, but you know, it, you'd have good reason to be suspicious if I got this hand. But if we played poker for hours, days, weeks, years, and eventually I get a high-ranking straight flush, well, you wouldn't be that surprised. After all, if we play enough games, I'm bound to get such a, a good hand like this. So I guess the idea is what if, you know, instead of having one universe that played, you know, instead of playing this play game of poker just once, just having one universe, supposing we, the universe played this game of poker many times that Perhaps we live in, in one of a number of universes. And in each universe, uh, there's a different value of the physical constants. Now, if this were the case, then it wouldn't be surprising that we, we find that the constants are perfect for our life because you know, there's no one that lives in those other universes that are bad for life. <laughs> so we have to find ourselves in one of the good universes. Um, so in this case, there would be you know, many, many multiple universes, perhaps an infinite number, and um, in some of them, and in a very few of them, there is a, uh, the, the constants of nature and perhaps the physics of nature are, um, are, just, cr are just right for life to exist. So th let's get back to our hypotheses. Now I must stress that unfortunately none of these hypotheses are falsifiable. We don't know whether any of these are true because we have no way of testing them, right now at least. And for this to be science, really, we have to have a way of testing them to, f to know whether they're true or not true. Um, as Brad mentioned, string theory is one of the candidates for exp explaining why the parameter, these physical constants have the values they do. Unfortunately, it's not testable. <laughs> so it, it's a good attempt, but it could be misguided. It could be a dead end. So what we need is some sort of testable theory that could explain why these constants have the values that they do. And it wouldn't be surprising if that theory implied that we lived in the multiverse. So that would be one way we, we could know whether this is true. So we basically have to wait for new physics. And new physics may be coming because just last year, the Large Hadron Collider turned on. This is uh, a 27 kilometer um, uh, circle. It, it, it uh, spans the border between Fra Switzerland and France. It's 100 meters underground cost billions of dollars to build. And this, is, this piece of equipment was built just to, um, to test physics, physical theories to find out whether or not they are consistent with reality. So you know, this is the type of effort that we're going through just to find the evidence we need to prove or disprove these new, this new physics. And uh, so hopefully, you know, if, if things go well, maybe this will result in a theory that 
could tell us whether possibly we live in a multiverse. Thanks very much.